And if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the party. Today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. We are on episode number 594 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Free Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier. And over the next 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, I don't know, but over the next good period of time, me, you, DJ BSEC, Casually Joseph, Marcus Kyler in the Yeet Crew, James McQuiggan, Kimberly from the couch, <laughs> the rich 464 Willem Philippe Nerman ZMF my friends all those squad members all those on YouTube LinkedIn folks like Raymond Cruz and Logan Fuller Toasty Pops in the great state of Kansas or maybe I don't know Missouri definitely Kansas City wherever Toasty Pops and we are all going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day and I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So how can you use this information to drive cyber risk reduction for your business stakeholders? And if you're looking to break into the industry, believe me, you're going to be asked in any job interview, how do you stay current? Right here is a banger of an answer. Yes, James McQuiggan, I'm sorry. James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet. But hey, listen, if you're looking to break in the industry, this is going to keep you current, keep you informed. You're going to be well aware of kind of the overall arching vibes and meta of the industry. Plus, the networking is amazing. Chef's kiss. You could say what's up to Leatherneck Cyber War. You can say what's up to Angie Yarbrough. You can high five Jacob Ward. It's as simple as that. Hashtag Team SC. We are a supportive, inclusive community here, people, and you are more than welcome as long as you follow the rules, which are pretty straightforward. Do good things. Be a good human. It's as easy as that. Now, before we get into the show, before we start melting faces, before we get James McQuiggan's joke of the week, I want to say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsor, Start with Barricade Cyber Solutions. Listen, Barricade Cyber Solutions, they're dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks, they suck, and they can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But you know what? Casually, Joseph, he's got the pilot stick right now. He's bobbing and weaving, dipping through, like, you know, the old um, uh, Afterburner video game? Like, you know, again, all my references, I'm in my 40s, so these things make sense. But the Afterburner game where you could, like, dip and dive and everything like that, that's what Casually Joseph's doing. Eric Taylor and the crew over there, they know how to yeet threat actors. Take me outside. How about that? They they straight up take them outside. How about that? Check them out at BarricadeCyber.com. Also, shout out to Anti-Siphon Training. My friends over there, uh, Zach Hill, um, John Strand, the whole team, Anti-Siphon Training is disrupting the traditional cybersecurity training industry by offering high quality cutting edge education to everyone, regardless of financial position. We offer, uh, they offer their students the opportunity to learn skills. I can't even look at that. They offer their students the opportunity to learn skills, practice what is taught and engage in a fun and inclusive community. Go to antisiphontraining.com right now and go to the training tab on that page and then go to the pay what you can training because That is all of the different training you can get for zero dollars if you want. And there's a really great course selection over there. So don't sleep on that. I want to let you all know that every single episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Brief, 594 of them, we, we, I don't prep, don't research, don't do anything. I don't even know um, what stories we're going to be looking at, except for one about a cancer. You can see it scrolling across the bottom. Um, So you're going to get my raw... uh, impression on what this is it's equivalent of just grabbing a cup of coffee with me 
in the break room right before work starts and just talking about the news you heard in the car on the way in. So it's all about good times. Now, did you know, what's up, Alpha Sierra? Did you know that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Brief is worth half ACPE? So say what's up in chat. It's burned into the stream right there. Grab a screenshot, file it in a folder on your desktop, and at the end of the year, count up how many files you have and multiply it by 0.5 because that's how many CPs you've earned. It's as easy as that. Two and a half a week, 10 a month. Don't be shy. Say hashtag Team SC in chat. And if you are here for the first time, we love having new people come here. We try every day to uh, promote and get uh, more people to find out about the stream. So if it's your first time on the stream, drop a hashtag first timer in chat. Hashtag first timer in chat. We have a special sound effect. We have a special sound effect um, um, and a special emote for you first timers. So let us know. You know what, Phil Stafford, you're 100% right. We're all coming in hot and spicy uh, to the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. So hashtag Team SC. Great to see y'all. Omatola Agbana, broke hacker in real life. We got you. Hashtag Team SC. And a, a, a little bit of a shout out, a little bit of a throwback, a little bit of a retro move here. Um, If you are a regular, right, like you show up all the time, but you never really engage in chat, I challenge you today, just today, hashtag passive observer in chat. It's okay if you're here and you're a passive observer, but just today, maybe engage a little bit. I really think that there's so much value in um, in networking and commenting uh, so much it's it's so so valuable and if you want remind me at the end and i will tell oh it's shoot today's bingo day too i'm sorry hey um we, we're doing the bingo i completely forgot i here's the thing guys really quickly um there was an incident on the discord server this morning that required swift action and the entire mod team had to come together to um discuss like the appropriate way to handle it and it totally derailed my entire situation so um here is the uh, a bingo card, I believe. Here, I think this is the bingo card. If you want to play the bingo, I'm sorry that we didn't get it started. I did promise bingos today. Um, how do I? How do I? Uh, gra- hold on. Grab a bingo card. Grab a bingo card. Sorry, everybody. It's just you know, it's a hot mess express, and today of all days, we had to deal with some, some. Uh, Somebody who wasn't playing by the server rules, okay? So go ahead, grab your bingo card, and uh, let's boogie on that, all right? So um, just, I don't know what your bingo card looks like. I I will grab my own right here just to demonstrate really quickly. Uh, Jerry guy is my my name. I generated my card. You can see I've got the bingo card up here. So um, let's see. Whoa. uh, (laughs) Um. Let's see. I am, oh, the anime wow sound effect. So I played that earlier with Alpha Sierra. And there you go. I would go ahead and mark that off. And now I've got that. If you get a bingo, either across, down, diagonal, go ahead and giddy up on that. Uh, if you hear me, you know, save the sound effects or whatever. Oh, here's a free slot. Go ahead. So get up on that. Hey, Mr. Tanner. Good to see you, Passive Observer. Kevin IT. Good to see you. Look at all these wonderful Fix that link, Marcus Kyler says. What's the problem? Is that link not work? Um, does that link not work? All right, DJ BSEC, I'll need a little bit of help, my friend. Um, so, <laughs> woo, all right, here we go. All right, everybody, do me a favor. If we get, if we can't do the bingo right, we'll do it on uh, Monday, but let's try to get the bingo right. Uh, do me a favor, everybody, sit back, relax. Yeah, Toast Man, I know it's hard on the phone. Uh, Joel Harrison, the card is in the pinned chat. It's a URL. It's um, it's in the pinned chat right now. And you can see it on stream at the top right there. It's basically a URL. I screwed up. I'm sorry. I should have made it available long before we started um, the stream. It's just, again, uh, we were dealing with an incident that was unexpected. Um, oh, you have to search for Simply Cyber? Okay. I, I, I still don't know how to do this. It says if I share this link, it's supposed to take you right to it, which is a little which is a little crappy. All right, we'll work through it. Maybe we'll do bingo a few more times just to kind of work out the kinks. Throw slash between the number and the domain. Okay, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. 
There you go. There we go. Now try it. Sorry, everybody. Apparently, apparently there was a, um, basically a URL didn't have the slash. So it was, it was kind of dorked up, but, uh, there we go. All right. Hey, no problem. Cyber butterfly. We got you. No, no, no. Go. Let's start right now. Go, 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 go. All right. All right. So, Hey, do me a favor, sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news wash over us in an awesome wave. See you at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Friday, April 5th, 2024. I'm Steve Prentice. Good luck, Alex. Classified Five Eyes Data Theft Announced. A threat actor going by the name of Intel Broker is claiming to be in possession of documents belonging to the Five Eyes Intelligence Group. According to a post made by the threat actor on a dark web forum, the data stolen allegedly includes, quote, full names, government and military email addresses, office and personal phone numbers, and classified information and communications between the Five Eyes, 14 Eyes, and U.S. allies, end quote. The group states that they breached a Virginia-based federal technology consultancy named Acuity Incorporated, which works directly with the U.S. government and its allies, and which claims to have, quote, deep expertise in areas such as IT modernization, DevSecOps, cybersecurity, data analytics, and operations support, end quote. Cancer. All right, so check it out. Um, there's a whole bunch of things here. One, this is a, a supply chain attack, third party risk. The company is called Acuity. Acuity is the one that got compromised and they had access to a ton of data. Um, first of all, this is going to be really bad. When we talk about like impact, um, you know, like business impact, like resulting in loss of revenue, this is a real example. So there is a real possibility that Acuity will not renew its contracts going forward because this is going to piss off a lot of people in the federal DC space. Now, uh, because of that, they get compromised and the data that they have uh, ends up you know, getting into threat actors' hands, which includes all sorts of five eyes, 14 eyes, sensitive information, personal information. One thing that they said that kind of surprises me is that classified information was part of that. Um, you're not supposed to have classified information on unclassified systems. That's not how it works. You're, so to me, that's 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 really the concern is like, listen, your your security practices are that lax that you're just allowing classified information to be on unclass networks and unclass systems. They're supposed to be wholly separated. So I found that a little interesting. Again, I'm not 100% sure. We'll see where this goes. Uh, as far as like, what is the impact of that data getting out there? Obviously, um, with IT IT information, or what kind of information was in here? It, it said this acuity company was around IT. Uh, data includes a lot of DARPA-related military information, SQL files, SQL files, okay, uh, documents, etc. Acuity recently identified a cybersecurity incident related to a GitHub repo that housed data and nonsense and information. Upon becoming aware of the zero-day phone, Acuity applied the vendor security updates and performed mitigating actions. After conducting our analysis, third-party expert, Acuity has seen no evidence of impact on any of our clients' sensitive data. Well, that seems like a really odd thing to say, considering they um, have confirmed that data did get out. So unfortunately, it sounds like Acuity didn't do anything wrong. And yet, because of a zero day, they they had their data popped. And by the way, this is why, like, I'm not going to throw shade at this company, Acuity, but this is why you should have good data governance. Because zero days can happen, because systems can get popped, even if you have great information security. And because of that, when someone gets in and there's a data leak, if you are completely lax with your data governance, then there's so much more data that gets absolutely um, dropped in the leak when there doesn't really need to be. Really quick, Jason Garcia, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me get that little... Uh, John McLean emote in here. Very nice. If you got John McLean on your bingo card, good, good stuff. Um, yeah. So anyways, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The, 
And again, just one kind of side thing. This is a little bit of a tinfoil hat move for me. Um, as much as I say like, okay, this company might not be able to renew its contracts because it had this massive black eye kind of hit on it. The way things work in DC, the way things work in DC, if um, this guy right here, Rui Garcia, if he's like a DC power player, if he's got friends in high places, then this won't affect anything. Again, whether it's right or wrong, networking is incredibly valuable. And if this guy has the ear of decision makers in DC and he's like, listen, we didn't do anything wrong. Like a zero day popped. And I mean, not that he's going to say that, but you know what I'm saying? So just, um, just, you know, food for thought that human relationships do matter quite a bit. Um, Since your data breach affects 800,000. City of Hope, a cancer treatment and research center based in Duarte, California, and with a network of clinical practice locations and offices across the U.S., is now sending out breach notifications. This is in relation to an incident that occurred between September 19th and October 12th of last year. The center says the data stolen includes names, dates of birth, email addresses, phone numbers, driver's license numbers, social security numbers, bank account numbers, credit card details, health insurance information, and medical information. Some of these 800,000 individuals had been notified in December, but not all had been identified until late March of this year, the center said. And All right, that sucks. Uh, really quick, I'm just going to throw out a guess here. I guess this is the Ricida ransomware threat actor group, okay? I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out there. We'll see if it comes to be true. Not that I... Um, like in, I'm not wearing like a Reseda for life t-shirt or something like that. Or like I'm going on social media talking about hashtag team Reseda, but, but I'm just going to throw it out there. And that's my, that's my guess on this one. Um, Hey, guess what? Threat actors, um, pretty low, pretty scummy hitting a freaking, uh, 800,000 cancer patients. Nice job. Like how do you sleep at night? Uh, with that kind of action. Um, obviously the data that was compromised was the, individuals information. So not only do you have cancer, but now you're going to have to worry about identity theft and being scammed and spearfish. So that's awesome. You know, ugh, just, just gross. Uh, there isn't much to this story. Um, an unauthorized third party access a subset of systems and copy filed files off. Actually, this isn't even a ransomware attack. I'm sorry. Um, so maybe it's not Raycita. Ricita is like hot for the um, for the healthcare sector. Um, so, anyways, it sounds like someone someone had some data open and they copied it off. Like this sounds like a pretty pretty low hanging uh, fruit kind of attack. Doesn't say whether the unauthorized access was result of compromised credentials or, um, you know, a leaky you know kind of like misconfigured database or something like that. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it sucks. It sucks. You, you'd almost hope that the threat actors would respond with like, oh, we're going to delete this data. We didn't realize, like, we didn't realize we crossed a moral uh, line here. Droid Pixel phone zero day flaws being exploited. by Space Tacos coming in hot with the super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Thank you, Space Tacos. Space Tacos saying hashtag team SC, best community ever. Forensic companies. Google has warned in an April 2nd advisory of two high-severity zero-day vulnerabilities numbered CVE-2024-29745 and 29748 that may already be under what they describe as, quote, limited targeted exploitation, end quote. The maintainers of the open-source Android operating system Graphene OS have stated, quote, forensic companies are rebooting devices in after-first unlock state into fast-boot mode on pixels and other devices to exploit vulnerabilities there and then dump memory, end quote. Okay. Proton accuses... All right, well, I mean, a couple good things here. One, um, so there's two zero days in... It says graphene OS, um, which I, I don't, I, I don't know what that is. Like I thought uh, Google Pixels ran on Android OS, so I'm not. Maybe I'm confused about it, what, what graphene OS is. Can you like flash your Android devices with a different operating system? Um, I'd be curious about that. But it, the Pixel is 
um, if I was going to have an Android phone, I would get a Pixel. It's as close to Google as you can get. It is Google's hardware, meaning that it receives updates, support, security patches pretty quickly. You don't have to deal with like, you know, a, thir a third party vendor um, upfitting the patch to work on their system. Um, which by the way, I've said this before, but if you didn't know, that's why like if you have some kind of like off-brand Android phone device, um, it you, you might be like locked on a certain operating system, even though Google has released further versions, you can't upgrade to it. It's because um, the vendor has made some type of like custom build and it would be a lot of work for them to update the custom build um, to, to support the new update. Graphene OS is the secure OS uh, privacy focused mobile OS with Android app compatibility. Oh, I like that. Uh, that is pretty cool. I had no idea that that existed. And now the fact that graphene OS could be kind of hacked is even more reason to giddy up on this and, and do it. Um, basically the nature of this attack is that they're able to reboot the phone and cause it to boot into a different, like, system of the operating system, basically, right? It's almost like a grub loader, where instead of booting into the main graphene, they, they do something called fast booting, which allows them to essentially access memory and then dump the memory. This isn't like some cool Mission Impossible where they like rebooted and like tap a bunch of stuff um, and all of a sudden they're in the phone. They basically just reboot it and then they're able to dump the memory, which is what they actually want, the contents of the phone, uh, and then do stuff with it like that, okay? Um, Obviously, patch your stuff. If you're running Graphene OS, it sounds like you're already quite savvy about privacy and security. So you'd want to get up on this. The final thing I'll say about this is that the exploit has been discovered and by a forensic company. Now, it says exploited in the wild by forensics companies. Typically, when we say in the wild, we're actually reserving that for threat actors exploiting out in the, out in the public sphere uh, a known vulnerability, right? So to say it's in, exploited in the wild by a forensic company, I guess is fine. But in my mind, the forensics company is probably exploiting it in controlled settings, unless they're like a fraudulent, like malicious forensic company, uh, like, you know, kind of like the way uh, spyware is being used and stuff like that. Kenyan Ezo, passing the pen test plus. Welcome to the party. Nice job. TLDR, update your stuff. <laughs> and thank you, Google, for warning. Outlook of spying on customers and selling their data. Calling Outlook for Windows, quote, a surveillance tool for targeted advertising, end quote, Edward Comenda of Proton Mail describes how European users of Outlook for Windows are being offered an accept-reject modal that describes how Microsoft shares user information with 801 of its closest partners. Oh. Such notifications are not offered to U.S. users, he says, due to a lack of similar cohesive privacy legislation. The messaging includes a listing of advertising partners who will have access to the data. Commenda points out that some of these ads are already appearing as inbox messaging. He adds that Microsoft does offer opt-out choices, but the techniques for doing so vary with each advertising partner. Um, I know this is a kid-friendly show, Earmuffs, Kennedy. Microsoft, you. Are you kidding me? Bro, I pay for Microsoft like Office 365. I pay for it. If you want to give it to me for free and shove ads in my inbox, go for it. This is disgusting, dude. This is gross. First of all, they're pushing ads to you. Second of all, they're selling your data. So like, it's almost like, it's almost like my monthly Office 365 invoice is just, you know, icing on the cake. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it's, it's extra, um, you know, uh, Himalayan sea salt. They're really making straight cash, homie, off of um, our data. Cash, I'm homie. telling you guys, in 2024, data is the most like lucrative asset. And we all are just generating it all the time. It, it's, it's the craziest version of capitalism because like the consumer, I mean, we, like we are producing it. What Microsoft has to do is just come up with a way to harvest it and then sell it. Oh, hold on. This might be, I, I, I might be losing my mind for a hot second. 
I, um, I'm out the window on the ledge, and BSEC is yelling from inside the office room through the window. This might be for Outlook.com only. Okay, that could be that could be true. I could I let me let me hold on. Let me let me step back through the window back into the office. I'm a little less insane. My my major concern here was that. I was paying for a service and all of you were paying for a service and they were going to start pushing ads in here. If this is outlook.com, that is a, you know, free account, which by the way, you're forced to create, uh, in order to like access, um, like Xbox lot in network. And also like my, I got my son set up with a new computer and like, you basically can't start a windows, uh, home PC without, uh, configuring it with an office account. Anyways, I guess I'm less mad about this. I mean, Google Google kind of does this already a little bit. We know they're selling it. At least they give you a little bit of opportunity to configure your advertising preferences. Whatever. It just feels gross. It just feels gross. New Outlook steals your email password. That's a more interesting story. Let's see. When you sync third-party email accounts from services like Yahoo or Gmail with the new Outlook... You risk granting Microsoft access to the IMAP and SMTP creds associated with that account. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting, man. So I guess be careful if you're trying to feed all your accounts into Outlook. Separate story. That's a bonus story. Whatever. Now, now that I've like calmed down a little bit, like this should not, this should not surprise anyone. This should not surprise anyone. If anything, if I was a Microsoft shareholder and they weren't doing this, I'd be outraged. <laughs> that was a quick about face. And now a word from our sponsor, Vanta. The average security pro spends nearly a full workday every week just on compliance. With Vanta, you can automate compliance for in-demand frameworks like SOC 2, ISO 27001, and HIPAA. Even more, Vanta's market-leading trust management platform enables you to unify security program management with a built-in risk register and reporting and streamline security reviews with AI-powered security questionnaires. Over 7,000 fast-growing companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash CISO to learn more. That is V-A-N-T-A dot com slash CISO. All righty. I hope you're having a good time. Hope you're having a good Friday. Hope your bingo cards coming together. Let's look at the bingo cards. All right. Just so you know, everyone, just in case, um, we got jokes of the day today. Go ahead and chalk off my uh, Nelson laughing emote. Hey, guys, if you're getting value from the stream, whether it's educational value, entertainment value, I would like to say thank you very much for being here. If you'd like to pay it forward, Go ahead and hit that like button right now. It triggers the YouTube algorithm to enable other people to find the stream who are typically um, looking for cybersecurity content on the cha- uh, on YouTube's platform. Simple as that. Again, thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade Anti Siphon, um, for sponsoring the show. Definitely appreciate that. We got Delete Me coming up here at the second half of the uh, month. Uh, super cool. Guys, let me tell you about the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. What an opportunity to blow up your personal network. Shanita Pearson has the baton. Shanita Pearson, are you in chat? Shanita, Shanita's in chat. Hello. Hi, Shanita. Hey, guys, if you didn't know, the Simply Cyber Community Challenge is an opportunity to blow up your professional network and connect with like-minded professionals on LinkedIn. It's very simple to blow it up. All you got to do is head over to LinkedIn, search for that hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge, and then find the posts where people are posting with them, just like Shanita did yesterday, and connect with them and comment on their post and connect to the people in comments. Five minutes a day of active participation. 
the other 23 hours of passive participation, you will blow up your network. Believe me, believe me when I tell you it is worth investing in yourself and in your time. Networking is super valuable. Now, Shanita, I'm going to ask her to tag somebody. If they can, it's your turn to share your story. Don't be shy. Step into the light. Head over to LinkedIn, make your post, and use the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge and tag me, Gerald Osier, PhD, in the chat so I can amplify it and help you reach more people in our community. It's as easy as that. It's all about good times. It's all about community. That's what we're doing here. Every single day of the week is a special segment, and Fridays is the longstanding Grayson's Joke of the Week presented by James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet. Now, because of our good friends over at Black Hills Information Security uh, launching their new magazine, Reca Comics, which funded in 46 minutes, by the way, I was very happy to have jumped on this. And I, I uh, am going to be getting a hard copy of the comic myself. This right here, because of this, uh, James has decided to go with a comic book theme jokes today. So James wants to know, what you call Iron Man when he doesn't have any clothes on? What do you call Iron Man when he has no clothes on? Stark naked. Oh, <laughs> very nice. So where does Bruce Wayne get all his energy from? I don't know. It, it does take a lot of energy to run the Batcave, the Batmobile. He's always doing stuff. Where does he get his energy from? From bat trees. bat trees. Ooh, that one's a little bit of a groan. Where does Spider-Man hang out in his spare time? Well, if you didn't know, you can catch him either at your local coffee shop or on the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web. And finally, and finally, James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet, king of the dad jokes, wants you to know that Spider-Man and Wonder Woman are starting their own business together. You may have actually heard of it. It's Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services. <laughs> The new Spider-Man, Wonder Woman joint venture. Oof. Some of those were grown, but I do love James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet. Thank you so much, James, for continuing to support every week with the great uh, jokes. And if you didn't know about the Kickstarter, um, I know it's fully funded already, but come check this out. Um, remind me about this at Jaw Jacking, because there's one funny, funny thing I saw this morning about that that is absolutely hilarious. But now we got to get back to the news. New HTTP2 vulnerability exposes web servers to denial-of-service attacks. Security researcher Bartek Nowatarski reported the issue to the CERT Coordination Center. All right, we got 10 gifted subs coming in from James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet. We just become best friends. Yep. Thank you much, James. If you're one of, if you're one of the ones who um, are one of the lucky recipients of it, like Joel Harrison, broke hacker in real life, Ricardo Garcia, uh, you can thank James McQuiggan and get those Oprah emotes turned on. Oprah, you get a squad membership. You get a squad membership. Thank you so much, James. And Kevin IT with a super chat. We just become best friends. Yep. Great fireside with Jason and SC Raid yesterday. Thank you very much. Yeah, that we had a great, great in day late yesterday. January. His research shows that the continuation frame in the HTTP2 protocol can be exploited to conduct denial of service attacks. Codenamed HTTP2 Continuation Flood, the vulnerability deals with incorrect handling of headers and multiple continuation frames that make a denial of service condition possible. Ivanti pledges. All right. So, all right. Here's the deal. Uh, basically, this almost feels like a, a, um, a callback to yesteryear. So, HTTP, HTTP2 instances. So web servers that are set up to take HTTP2, they don't uh, sanitize or validate um, packets being sent to them. Uh, and you can basically do a denial of service attack. It makes me think of like a ping of death or teardrop attack or fragmentation attack back in the early days, um, like the late 90s. Uh, for denial of service attacks, where basically the, the TCP IP stack was unable to really handle um, ICMP ping requests that were not were malformed. This one is a layer seven attack attacking at the HTTP level. So it's your web server instance that would have to be configured. Um, all I would say is 
Um, personally, I'm not super familiar with HTTP2, so I don't know what, like if there's a fallback to HTTP um, by itself or you, you choose to implement either HTTP or HTTP2. Regardless, if you are running HTTP2, you definitely want to make sure that you're either able to limit or sanitize um, the continuation frames being sent. I'm sure whatever web server application you're running will have some type of update uh, regarding that since this looks like a fairly trivial thing to be able to execute these continuation frame. Like the protocol is accepting the continuation frame and if it's malformed, it's going to crap on itself. So that's all I would say about that. Um, good bit of research. Um, again, if I was a security researcher, if I was a security researcher, if I had some time, honestly, this looks like an area of opportunity to attack. So like basically HTTP2, uh, kind of a newer area, the RFC 7540 actually um, will point out the details of, um, hold on, is our, yeah, hold on, RFC 7540. Looks like it might be all about HTTP2. Let me see. Yeah, so this is a proposed standard. This is a proposed standard, so it's not even implemented yet. Maybe, I don't know, it says May 2015. So all I would say is as an opportunity for security research, you could look at this particular standard, go through, look at the different protocols. And really, the the for me personally, look at the fringe protocols, like, you know, this like a three-way handshake or something. That might be really standard and really well versed, but there's a couple flags, like maybe maybe this reset flag or maybe the fin flag or something, um, it, it doesn't handle it well. And there's an opportunity for you to discover a vulnerability, just like this continuation flag, right? So uh, very cool, very cool opportunity. If you have the time and interest uh, to look in that, if you're, you know, maybe you're a student at university and you're like trying to find a little project to do, this could be a really interesting one. So TLDR, if you're running HTTP2 on your web server, make sure that you got this addressed. Security overhaul. Following numerous breaches that have been traced back to Avanti products, the company's CEO, Jeff Abbott, has published an open letter along with a six-minute video in which he pledges to overhaul how his company, quote, builds its products and how it communicates with customers about vulnerabilities, end quote. The key breaches in question included those at CISA and government agencies in Norway. Abbott adds that Ivanti plans to adhere to a secure-by-design ethos, embedding security into every stage of the software development lifecycle. End quote. Lester. All right, hold on. Uh, I'm just... I was wondering if Avanti was privately owned or if it was uh, shareholders. So, all right, here's the deal. Um, Avanti, if you guys didn't remember... Avanti is a security, I mean, they're a software technology company, but they have security technologies as well. Avanti has, um, I, I've seen, I've been in environments before where Avanti is like kind of the endpoint management solution. Um, Rex with the super chat. Thanks, Rex. Did we just become best friends? Yep. What kind of jokes do farmers like the most? Groaners. Oh my God. Well then, old McDonald might love himself some James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet. He's, he's always got a groaner or two in there. So Avanti's a software company, um, but recently they've been in the news because they had multiple products with multiple failures. And even as they were fixing them, um, it looked like a Three Stooges episode uh, where they would like fix it and then immediately something else would break, including their VPN security gateway and uh, something called the 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 policy, secure policy connect or something like that. Uh, I didn't know what that product really did, but basically it was allowing uh, threat actors wholesale to penetrate companies and compromise them. Multiple governments actually use Avanti, so that was pretty bad. Um, what I want to say is, this is the CEO of Avanti. When the CEO of a company you know, comes out and makes a video. Like typically this guy's behind the scenes, right? There's, they probably have people at the company that do PR, that do these type of things. They must be in a whole world of hell for this guy to do a six minute video and make a public declaration about how they're serious about security, about how they are um, gonna, you know, change things going forward. 
Um, yeah, CISA had issued an emergency directive on Avanti vulnerabilities. I think they actually set CISA. I think I might be getting this confused with a different one, but I think it was Avanti. CISA came out on like a Wednesday and said any federal agency using Avanti needs to shut it off or fix it before Friday. Like they gave him like a 48 hour window to get it done. So this guy, this guy is running a company that might be hemorrhaging money and contracts pretty soon. So I appreciate that he's trying to get in front of it um, and say the right things. All I can say is, you know, this is one of those like fool me once, shame on me, fool me, uh, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Like he, he is doing this and I'm sure he means it at the time, but like if Avanti doesn't follow through with this and there's another incident at that scale, then this is going to be a really bad situation. This is like anything else, guys. Like once you say you're going to do something, you've got to do it. Once you take a position, then you've got to execute on it, right? Um, which is part of the reason why some businesses don't like doing risk assessments because once you do the risk assessment, all of your dirty laundry gets documented and aired out and then you have to have a plan for executing on it. And if you get audited or you know assessed again and all the same things are there, well, then you're not really taking security seriously. So that's a thing. Shanita saying, we got to take her. We got to take her. Looks like Zapalta will carry the baton. Let's go, Zapalta. City Council confirms ransomware attack. The UK city, about 100 miles north of London, has confirmed that confidential data has been published online following an incident that was identified on March 7th. Three terabytes of data was lifted by the Inc. ransomware group, and this data hall includes rent statements, applications to purchase council housing, and personal identification documents such as passport information. The ransomware group has posted examples of the stolen data on its data leak site. Oliver Spence, CEO of UK security firm Cyberverse, suggested a ransom payment is unlikely given the UK government's opposition to making ransom payments, meaning the group may be motivated by damage rather than money, which means more public bodies could be on its target list. <laughs> public bot. Oh, Yahtzee. Hold on. Did ZMF get bingo? Did we get a bingo, ZMF? I don't know. Brent B says he got bingo. Brent B? Do we have a winner, Brent B? All right, hold on one second. I, I think I am able to like look at all these cards. Let me see. Um, view cards. Let's look. Brent B, Brent B. Chris Whitlock. Very nice. Brent B. Brent B. We're looking at Brent B's card right now. We do have a Yahtzee, DJ Bsex, Cisa, James Wigan at 35,000 feet, gifted subs, LinkedIn. And did we just become best friends? Way to go, Brent B. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Once we figure out uh, how to reward people, uh, we will definitely do that. But great job for our first kind of quasi. This is our beta version of Bingo. We did Alpha and it was a mess. Got some feedback. This is our beta version. All right, back to the story here. Um, basically, some hackers uh, attacked this um, public council or, or city council thing. And they got some renters information. 25 documents were leaked. I don't know. Governments typically, like Five Eyes type governments, US, Canada, et cetera, they, they typically have a position that they're not going to pay threat actors um, ransom because it's like funding terrorism. So we'll see where it goes. This is pretty much a straight, um, this is a straight, you know, cr cyber crime in 2024. Business gets hit, data gets leaked, they make the decision not to pay, threat actor tries to sell it, moves on to the next victim. Like this is this is basically, you know, your standard operating procedure here. Japanese lens manufacturer Hoya suffers. Alana, bingo is hot. It's so hot. That Hansel's so hot Cyber right attack. now. The Tokyo headquartered manufacturer of eyeglass lenses, contact lenses, intraocular lenses, and medical equipment lenses has halted production at some of its plants following an incident affecting central IT operations that was, quote, likely the result of unauthorized access to its systems, end quote. Internal investigations are still being conducted, and the company has not yet elaborated on the nature of this attack. As What? I mean, is there any story here? What's the story? A lens manufacturer is investigating a cyber incident that disrupted several sites. Okay. So it's ransomware, like just between me and you. Um, central IT operations affected on March 30th. So they're, they're like a week deep. 
Okay. Uh, they haven't really said why it happened or how it happened. What data? I mean, okay. So a manufacturing company was hit. They don't know what it was, how they got in. They don't know what data got out. They don't know what's impacted. This is a lot of uh, this is a lot of words to say not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, basically, TLDR. If I had to put money on it, I would say this is a ransomware incident. Manufacturing industry is, you know, top two uh, attacked industries for ransomware right now. There is a direct correlation between getting ransomware and losing production, right? Because the manufacturing machine stops making product and that scares businesses. Um, it's very easy to calculate, um, you know, loss, right? Uh, how much... How much, like usually manufacturing sites move 24 seven, right? So it's very easy to say we made a million dollars last year. There are 365 days in a year. There's 24 hours in a day. Air four, we make, you know, $18,000 a day. So for every day we're down, we're losing $18,000. Like manufacturing is one of the industries that you can very easily calculate daily loss. Um, so when you have those numbers and you get ransomware and say you're losing $5 million a day and the threat actors like give us $2 million, it seems like a very easy, um, calculus to, to do. And the threat actors aren't dumb. They know that too. Right. All right. So Z Z Talpa says, now what do I do? I'm a LinkedIn noob. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. Z Z Talpa. Very simple. Look at the screen right now, Z Zatalpa. Head over to LinkedIn, LinkedIn.com, the social, uh, you know, uh, business site or whatever. Post your story, like whatever, like why are you into cybersecurity? What, like, where have you done? Where are you going? What do you like about Simply Cyber Community? Like, what, whatever it is, like, let us get to know who you are, and then make sure you use the hashtag that you see in white at the bottom of the screen, Simply Cyber Community Challenge, so people can find your post. And if you can tag me using the at symbol at Gerald Dozier PhD, which will show up in my feed so I can amplify that for you. It's just an opportunity for everybody to get to know you. If you're looking for inspiration, search on the hashtag Zatalpa and look at what other people have posted previously and then kind of follow suit there. Usual, we've got a packed Friday of life. Oh, look at us kind of wrapping up strong. Oh, all right. So Talpa's already posted something coming in hot. All right. All right, guys. Woo! We had a day today, people. All right. Hey, if you are here just for the news, 380 people. I know some of you are on spring break, and I know all the college kids. The weekend started last night, so maybe that's why we're uh, hurting for numbers here. But listen. Really quickly, we got a we got a pack schedule today, all right? Where's my mouse? Okay, we got a pack schedule today. So check it out. At 12 noon Eastern time today. So in 3 hours from now, we are going to be doing the Simply Cyber State of Simply Cyber quarterly meeting. If you are if you really are, you know, if you're part of the Simply Cyber community, if you're a regular, if you want to know what's going on with the community, Rex with those gifted subs. Thanks. We just become best friends. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. Hey, K. Scott Powell. Good to see you. I hope everything's well with the family, K. Scott Powell. Listen, once a quarter, I do an all hands meeting for the Simply Cyber community. That's today at noon one. Uh, excuse me. That's at noon to one. And that will be on Simply Cyber's YouTube channel from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time today in the Simply Cyber Discord server. We will be running a live AMA event so you can come be part of it, ask questions. It will not be recorded. It will not be televised. It will be uh, a safe space, intimate space. You can ask questions, get on stage, be part of it. The AMA, we do it once a month. It's going to be awesome. Um... And I think that's it for today. It's all about good times. Now, if you want, we also do something called jaw jacking, which is about to happen in about two minutes. Um, final, final things. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, also, if you didn't know, uh, I did post it on social media, but I want to let everybody know that um, effective immediately, um, everything in the Simply Cyber Academy is 15% off. 
through April 15th. So it's like tax day is 415. So four. 15% off four, 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 15, whatever. So anyways, if you've been, if you wanted to gift the GRC class to somebody, if you're, if you were a bit like waiting to buy it until there was some type of deal, um, there you go. So the, the code is, oh wait, hold on. I can't put these on yet. The code is, uh, April 15 off April 15 off. All right, hold on one second. We got a super chat coming in. Uh, Space Chuckles, I see your question. I'll answer it during jaw jacking. Rex says, I'm trying to author my red team beginners guy, but I'm having trouble finding something comfortable to write with. I need to hire a pen tester. Oh my God. Can we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> oh my God, so good. So good. Okay, uh, we'll talk about all this. We'll talk about all the other stuff um, in a hot minute. Yes. And if you didn't catch my talk last night with Jason Haddix, it was sick. And if you want to know what's coming up next week, uh, my guest, um, she is a red team extraordinaire, a really great professional offensive security pro. Uh, we're really kind of leaning into the offset recently with Jason Haddix um, and now Savannah. So uh, come hang out next week. We got tons of time. But let's go over and pin uh, a pivot over to Jaw Jacket. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. Thank you all so very much. And until next time, stay secure. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Jaw Jack, and I'm your host, Jerry Guy. Just kicking it, coming in hot off the heels on Dr. Gerald Dozier's Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. We're just going to kick it here. This AMA next 30 minutes is essentially answering any and all of your questions that you might have around cybersecurity, career, industry, or anything like that. I see things are getting queued up. Let's go ahead and get on the train. One second, I've got some DMs coming in that I think I need to take care of. Oh, I see, I see, I see. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, uh, hey, so Space Tacos says, hey, Jerry has said, in oh, oh, have I said info stealer or ransomware? I said ransomware for sure. There were no info stealer stories today though. Uh, Gumby says, I just got through the first stage of my application for a CTI analyst. It's a recorded video interview, never done one before. So a bit nervous. Any tips for question responses? Yeah. I mean, the cool thing is because it's a recorded interview, you can prep like a boss. Uh, my advice to you, um, Gumby, if, if you already know what the questions are going to be, this is how I would do it you know, you choose your own adventure, but how I would do it, I would actually think through um, like how I'd want to answer these questions and then make a little outline that I can reference, not the answers, not full scripted answers, but just the outline because you want it to sound natural and authentic from your own voice. But by having an outline, um, you'll make sure that you kind of touch on every aspect you want. Nothing's worse than getting like, so like focused on one aspect and then uh, forgetting about all the others. And then afterwards you're like, oh my God, I should have mentioned X, Y, Z. So that's what I would do. Also, don't be afraid to take a couple cuts at it. Um, you know, I talk, I yell into a camera for like two hours a day, every day. So I'm a little bit more accustomed to it, but uh, you know, I still jack it up and have to restart and all these other things. So definitely get on that. Also just Gumby from a, a pure a pure, um, I guess like quality standard, make sure, uh, you're speaking into your mic nice and clear, make sure you're illuminated. Like, look at this. Like if it, I could, I could film this right now. You see me, I could film this and, and pass it in and it would be fine. But, um, subconsciously, whoever's watching, it's probably going to have some type of opinion. It's going to, it's going to influence how they're perceiving you. So just make sure that you're lit up if you have to be. And if you don't have like a spotlight like that, you can also use like, oh my God, the eye of Sauron. Hold on. That's not going to work. Let's close that. Just natural light's pretty good. Uh, so that's what I recommend. Hey, Sharon Akpala. Hey, Sharon Akpala. You passive observer. It's great to hear from you. I'm glad you said what's up. 
Ann came Kaminer says, are we doing anything for April 20th? Um, April 20th is a Saturday this year. So I don't typically stream on Saturday. Um, so no, <laughs> but I mean, if, if you're into, uh, you know, if you're into April 20th type stuff and you want to, um, you know, legally do things that, that relax you go for it, giddy up on that. I'm not one to judge. Um, Brandon Lane, passive observer, because I'm on the late train, usually start watching them out when the daily cyber threat brief is over. Scheduling sad face. Hey, Brandon Lane. Glad to have you here. Appreciate you making time for us on the train. I know schedules can be tough, but we're happy to have you here, Brandon. All right. Jerry, what are your thoughts on Splunk for Sim? Taekwon Gong. Um, so Taekwon Gong, Splunk for Sim. Now, Splunk was recently acquired by Cisco, so I don't know if things have changed. But Splunk, two things I'll tell you about it. One, there's a lot of training out there for Splunk. Splunk is an enterprise-grade sim. It's very good. The challenge with Splunk is um, it's expensive, right? So I know this doesn't affect the SOC analyst practitioner, but for businesses... Splunk charges by data held, right? And data held is like what you're able to like query on in your SIM platform, your Splunk interface. So Splunk, the app is not really that expensive. The data that they uh, um, store and index and query that that don't really know what they're doing with all due respect, um, will just capture all the data because they don't know what they need and what they don't need in, in, in effect, they're saving tons of data they don't need, which means they're paying for a ton of storage they don't need, which means it's super expensive. And unfortunately, Splunk, um, where I've seen it, you get like kind of locked in and integrated to it. So it's very difficult uh, to pivot off. That doesn't. So that's my thoughts on Splunk. I will also tell you, since a, you know, a bonus fact, since I'm on the topic and no one asked, <laughs> um, I've heard Microsoft Sentinel, which is the SIM solution in Office 365, um, actually is quite expensive as well. Um, it's kind of a sleepy giant uh, and gets a little bit out of control. I've heard cyber Eddie, can you review my portfolio website? It's not fully done, but I have the general idea published. Yeah. Drop it in chat. I'll bring it up and we'll tear it up for a minute. Um, Splunk is a funny name. Yeah. Jerry, what are your thoughts on Sumer logic or stellar cyber for SIM? John Brock. Uh, I've never heard of stellar cyber, so I don't have an opinion on that. Sumo logic I believe Sumo Logic, is that open source? Uh, uh, Let me see the pricing on Sumo Logic. Sumo Logic has free version, log data retention. Hold on, I'm looking at this right now. Let's see what screen we get. Oh, you got my production screen. (laughs) That's funny. All right, let's change the screen. So it's always a wild card on what screen you're gonna get. Okay, so this is uh, Sumo Logic. I've heard of Sumo Logic. I know some MDR providers will support it. Uh, you can see here for free, you can have um, seven days of log data retention. This is what I was talking about, like what's wicked expensive. Um, let's see, um, log capacity a gig a day. Again, there's two stars there, so you might want to check out what that means. Real time alerting 50 50. Um, I don't know. This would be, definitely be like worth uh, checking out. Okay, they do have a free tier. I guess here's the thing I would say: when it says free, but then it says start free trial, to me that indicates that it's not free forever. There's a period of time that they want to get you in and get you on. So. We'll see. It, I don't, so I don't have an opinion. I've heard good things about it. I do like the dark mode. But I don't know. There's other solutions out there. Gray log, um, you know, just your regular elk um, stacks, elastic uh, cabana stacks. All right. Did, did Eddie drop his link? to his to his portfolio 
All right, I'm an elder millennial. What's relaxing mean? No kidding, Rex. Welcome to the party, pal. Jeez. Welcome to the party, pal. Morning, Dr. Osier. My company may pay for me to go to Wild West Hackenfest. Should I choose a training that would benefit my role or one I'm most interested in? Thanks for your input. Ooh, so Lazaro, I know you just got that job recently. If it were me, if it were me, this is what I would do. If you plan on staying at the company that you're at right now, I would absolutely take one that adds value to your job. And then when I came back, I would make it oh, like almost abundantly overt that you're taking the training you learned and implementing it into practice and then demonstrating some type of return on investment for the business, right? It's not enough to just say, oh, I learned some cool stuff and I'm trying it out. Like I would go all the way with like a little plant. Like when you come back, so t take the training, right? And when you come back, tell your boss like, oh, hey, I learned this, this, and this, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, this, and this on these dates. And then next time you meet with your boss after those dates pass, you could say, hey, remember I told you about that thing you sent me for that training? Well, I've done X, Y, and Z, and here's what I'm seeing. And then finally, the third meeting, you can say, look, um, here is the value or whatever it's and, and don't make it about the money. Don't make it about the cost of, of sending you just make it about value for your business and organization. Trust me, like sending for training and stuff, unless it's like a small, small business, the, the number, I don't want to say the numbers don't matter, but like spending two grand, like if you're like $750 million business spending two grand or whatever to send you, it's like no problem. But the boss will not or the business may not remember how much it costs to send you but they will remember the value they got from sending you and how it brought you know some change to your business to your environment so they'll send you again next year that's what i would do morning dr Osher. oh wait that's the same question <laughs> um let's keep going here all right yeah, Zeke used to be called Bro back in the day, but that that name changed. Zemif, I will tell you, uh, Zeke, aka now called Bro, um, it is like I've I've talked to multiple SOC analysts and security analysts, uh, SOC managers, and if you say, hey, you get one tool in your environment, what tool? Zeke is the one that they would take. Uh, is John Hoyt here? Is John, hold on, let me check. John Hoyt is not in chat. It's too bad. Um, yeah, definitely learning uh, Zeke is is definitely worth it. You can also go check out Core Light. Um, Zeke is free, but Core Light is a company that um, um, helps like implement Zeke at organizations and write uh, rules and stuff like that. So it's all good. All right. You, Zeke is basically like capturing Intel and logs around security events. That's like what, what makes it so good. Oh, Eric Capuano training. Yeah. You'll, well, you'll get a double shot because it's Eric and Whitney. And, um, I think that's the Velociraptor training, which is an open source tool. It's a free tool. Uh, but it allows you to do like crazy threat hunting and digging into, um, artifacts and stuff like that. So you won't be disappointed. Eric Capuano is legit. Whitney is legit. They're over at Lima Charlie now. All right. Tom Bishop, my man, Tom. Good to see you. All right, Cyber Eddie, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you could drop it in uh, DMs. Or, uh, yeah, thank you. Post it to Discord, Cyber Eddie. Oh, Brian Mulder. I don't know. Yeah, I guess maybe Corelight's marketing. They spam you a lot. I don't know. I do know um, one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life is um, works at Corelight, Dr. Keith Jones. I graduated PhD DSU uh, with Co Dr. Keith Jones. And uh, that dude is, you know, put it this way. He's a double E. Marcus Kyler knows what I'm talking about. E smartest people I've ever met in my life. Double E. Uh, holders, double E electrical engineers. I probably do have a video for that. Carlos Fortoza, what is the baton for? Carlos, we have something called the Simply Cyber Community Challenge that we do every single day, and it's a way to uh, connect the community and blow things up. Today, we have 
Um, Zatalpa with a with the baton. If you want to come back on Monday, Carlos, and volunteer for the baton, you absolutely can. Carlos, go on LinkedIn and search for the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge, and you will see what I'm talking about. Search on LinkedIn for it. You'll love it. Uh, Lazaro, we're slowly implementing Velociraptor. Oh my God. Yeah, no, that you would have amazing value. Also, Lazaro, <laughs> mention, mention Simply Cyber. I mean, whatever, I'll be there. <laughs> so you could just point over there and be like, Eric, that guy. Eric and I are friends. Uh, so I... Whitney and I are, are friends too, but Whitney's Whitney's very quiet, so. Good morning from Kansas City. Hashtag Team Kansas City. That's right, Scott B. Toasty Pops. All right. Looking to obtain my ISC2 GRC cert. Any good resources? How can I pass the exam? I have my CISSP. Nice, August, Augusto Delgado. Um, so, I mean, obviously, Augusto um, is far... Like, okay, so Augusto Delgado wants help passing the ISC2 GRC cert. I will just point out the not free solution uh, would be my GRC Analyst Masterclass, which is... I don't even know what the ISC GRC cert is asking about, but I guarantee you my class will cover everything that's in that cert. Um, and it's actually 15% off right now. Uh, so if you go to academy.simplycyber.io, you'll see it. Now for free resources, Augusta Delgado, um, let me, let's just do a quick little, let's just do a quick little, let's see what this is. All right, security management, scoping. Oh, you know what? Hey, Augusta Delgado, I got your answer. This right here, looking at these domains in order. I don't know if you can see them on stream. You guys see these domains in order? Look at this. Program, scope, selection, implement, audit, authorize, continuous monitor. Do you know what this is? This 100% 100, 100 overlap is... Ready? Get some of this. Come on, bro. Ready? You want to see a magic trick? Oh my God. That graphic is terrible. There we go. You ready? Program, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, continuous monitor. Wait a minute. Is this a one-to-one -one mapping? Yes, it is. This is NIST 837 all day long. Augusta Delgado, if you want to pass this, go look at this document right here. 837 Rev 2. All your base belong to us right here. GRC for the win. All right, here we go. I'll drop a link in chat. Although I don't know if I can drop links. There we go. All right, uh, Keith Sloan, what would be your number one takeaway from the chat with Jason yesterday? Oh my God, Keith. Um, yeah, I mean, that conversation with Jason, like that man, that man, that man grinds hard. I guess really my, 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 um, key takeaways would be like, I'm not using AI remotely. Um, re like I use AI every day and I'm, I'm like a basic B user. Jason is a power user and there's a lot of insights that can be gleaned from him around utilizing the full potential of AI. That's, that's what I, uh, got from it. Also, I want to point out, I, I, Jason, um, I, is doing his uh, course in um, June. I've never been able to take it because it's always on the weekends. He's offering it during the week. I looked into it last night. Well, um, the, last night and this morning. Um, I actually have a family vacation um, that week. Like I am off. Like I will be unavailable. 
which is awesome because I, I love my family and I really want to take a vacation with them, but I won't be able to take that course actually, which is unfortunate. Um, and also, uh, spoiler alert, I, I also am going to have to, um, <laughs> like BSEC, you might want to uh, get your ears warm. Um, I'm going to have to find some uh, replacement hosts for that week, uh, each of the day's daily cyber threat briefs. So um, I know Jack Scott's done it in the past. Josh Mason's done it in the past. Eric Taylor's done it in the past. I'm not going to ask Eric at all. Uh, I love Eric, but I'm not going to ask him at this particular time. And um, But BSEC, he's got all the fancy OBS uh, flipping around. So maybe we'll mix it up. All right, here we go. June, it's the week of June. Um, I believe it's the week of June 24th through June 28th. June 24th through June 28th. I'll have to confirm that. But... Um, I got to check with uh, my wife. Mrs. Osier uh, is definitely the key here. All right, so let's look at, uh, oh, Carlos. Hey, Gerald, good morning. What's, oh, I already answered that. All right, so check it out. We're going to look at Eddie. We're going to look at uh, Cyber Eddie's uh, portfolio. So now, Cyber Eddie, just so we're all on the same page, I'm perceiving that this is, um, is this something that you send to employers? It's just, is this just like, this is like your website basically, right? So you send people to it. Let's take a look. All right. I like, um, you know, I, you know, Hey, like this is a person. So now I feel like, you know, I like that West Michigan sock level one, try hack me projects to view, try hack me, root me. You're right up. Okay. You got a medium post. Okay, that's cool. This looks good. All right, so I like I like the blog post right up. Very nice. Um, let's look at your certs. Very nice. Notes. Okay. Is this like... Oh, this is your notes for Notion. So it almost seems like the notes are more for you than for the, the viewer. Let's look about the about. Okay, so obviously this is still in progress. Very nice. Um, hmm. All right, and then project page. All right, hold on. I'm just consuming this right now. All right, so this is obviously a work in progress. All right, here are my thoughts right now, Eddie. I like the concept of what you're doing, okay? Um, what I would say is on this page, since this is your landing page, right? You got to remember, whoever's coming to your page and I mean this with all respect to everybody, right? But you have to make it as easy as possible for them to consume the content, right? So like even clicking on your certifications tab might be asking too much, right? So if it was possible to have everything on like one page and kind of like like one of those like uh, doom scroll things, that could be uh, useful. Um, you have your get in touch way down here. Uh, people aren't, people might not even scroll. People might not even scroll down here, right? It might just be what they do here. So I, I might even put, um, get in touch like right here. Um, also what I think, uh, my initial reaction is this is not, it's, 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 um, okay. I'm just going to say it kind of bluntly. Okay. Eddie, this layout is kind of, uh, disorganized, right? It, it, it just kind of looks like, uh, some things kind of thrown on the table. I know it's a project in progress, but I, Personally, I'd like to see it just a little bit more tightened up. Like you have a a lot of like real estate. Like look at all this real estate right here. Like this is all dead white space, right? And I, and I get I get you know I like what you're doing. It's just this is a ton of real estate. Like I go to this page. I'm not going to scroll. I'm not going to click on any links. And there's almost as much blank space as there is content. That just needs to be tightened up. Again, I like what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, basically on the cert page, I like this. You I, you might want to add like uh, some type of statement here, like like even this one or two sentences, like about your certs or why you're getting them or the direction or something like that. Your notes, again, there's no context to this page. Like, look at this is this is a massive amount of real estate, and I know this is a resource for you. 
But if someone were to come here, they, they, they like I figured it out, but people aren't going to want to think or work. So, you know, you might say, Hey, like almost have like a statement right here. Like, Hey, this is uh, you know, for try hack me, try hack me is a platform for learning hacking. And I've been focusing on the defender workflow learning path or whatever. Here are my notes for crushing try hack me. Take advantage of them. If you'd like exactly, you know what I mean? Like, et cetera. So like that's, I would do that. Uh, your about page, uh, I like this, but again, I don't know if people are going to necessarily read this. Also, um, your about page, I don't know who, I don't know who this is, right? So this, this picture is a huge picture taking up a ton of real estate that doesn't really do anything. Like I'd rather see, I'd rather see this picture because this is Eddie, right? And this is Eddie's about page. So just a couple thoughts. Um, you might even want to tighten it up. So like the picture is like in, in line with the text. So then it kind of wraps around it. Just a couple thoughts. All right. Be good, Tom Bishop. Good to see you. All right, let's go. What time is it? 917. Perfect. Tito Cybertech. I had my last interview for a SOC analyst position last Tuesday, straight with the CEO. I did great. He told me that he would recommend me to the hiring manager for the position, but I haven't heard back. Should I email them? to ask. Yeah. I mean, if you have the CEO's email and it's been, you said last Tuesday. So I'm assuming you mean a week ago, Tuesday, not two days ago. Um, if it was Tuesday, the second, I would wait until next week. If it was Tuesday, the, um, March 26th, I would, I would certainly email and just say, Hey, if you have the CEO, I would say, Hey, um, really appreciated it. I know things have been busy, right? You got to remember the CEO is probably very busy. And while you guys had a connection, you're not the top of the CEO's mind likely, right? So I might, I might follow up with the CEO and, you know, say, Hey, like, I really enjoyed the conversation. I know you were going to recommend me to the hiring manager. I haven't heard back. Is there anything I can do to help facilitate? Then I would email the hiring manager and just say, Hey, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure. Like maybe just following up to see if there was anything else that I could possibly help uh, or you had any follow-up questions. You might even want to say if there was some conversation during your interview with the hiring manager where there was some, I don't know, or do you know about this technology? No, I don't. Where you've done some uh, additional work, like, like, you know, like BSEC was saying the other day, like, hey, you know, do you guys know how to use Juniper or whatever? Do you know uh, how to program in Python? No. You could say, hey, like, you know, following up, let me know if you have any more questions. Also, you had mentioned, you know, learning Python would be useful. I've gone ahead and actually done X, Y, and Z to learn Python since we last spoke. Super excited about the opportunity. I hope to hear from you soon. Show that initiative, show that hunger. Don't be pushy uh, and try to deliver value in every form of communication. Also, don't write a word wall. Just be very succinct and to the point, right? Cause they're not going to read a word wall. Uh, let's see. All right. Jax, Joss, Justin, Joseph, Vsec. Ooh. Um, let's see. I will tell you, I mean, it'd be great to have tons of people in here. Um, what is this? Yeah. It looks like, um, it looks like Josh Mason might be on travel as well. Crap, my dogs are trying to get out of here. Hey, I don't know what Mod Chat's talking about here with the big X. Uh, where's this SC bingo? How does it work? How can you participate? So Zelaya, the bingo, um, the bingo already happened. We kind of did it during the morning brief. Uh, every day I will pin the bingo card into the chat. You can see if you're on YouTube, the, the cards right here. This is the winning card from Brent B, but you will get your own card issued to you. You can see here are all the different cards for the members of the Simply Cyber community that played along today. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll do it next uh, first Friday of every month. I know Brian Mulder, free the puppies. The thing is, I don't want them barking. Um, I don't want them barking. And also like in the corner, the back corner of my yard is muddy, but also 
we are kitty corner to another house where they have a dog and the dog will bark. And then my one dog, Gibbs, he will uh, dig into the mud and then I have to like manually, it, it like painfully clean out all of his claws. Um, I did have a, a request from Mrs. Ozier to introduce you guys to the dogs last night when I spoke to my beautiful, lovely, supportive, amazing soulmate. She said, have I introduced you guys to the pets? So if, if, if you don't mind, I'd love to introduce you. Come here. Come on. Which one, which one first? Come on. Can you go? Okay. Come on. All right. This is the first one. This is Gibbs. He's the troublemaker. All right, Gibbs, say hi. Come on, Gibby, say it. He's basically a living teddy bear, right? Okay. All right, so that's Gibby Goo. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Come here, Ripple. And this is the big boy. This is Ripley, his twin brother. Uh, if if we had to say that, like, one dog is mine and one dog is Mrs. Osier's, Gibbs is... Mrs. Osier's and Ripley's my boy. Huh? You're my boy, Blue. Okay. Yeah. Such great dogs. We're a dog family, y'all. Have a good day, Cyber Newbie. I know, Marcus Kyler. Mrs. Osier. Yeah. She is she is amazing. You guys will get to meet her some point uh what is the red square on the bingo card i have one is it for china or chinese threat actor let me see what space tacos is saying hold on i'm gonna pull up space tacos's card here let's check out what she says let's look at space tacos card together um, space tacos, which, which one, which red X, I don't know what, I don't know which red X it is here. If you're talking about the, uh, first column G, this thing right up here, this, this guy right here, let me know if this is what you're asking about. Uh, and then this is, uh, that's AI, right? Shall we play a game? Top left. Oh, this one right here. This is the Metal Gear Solid sound effect. <laughs> so if you hear this sound effect, that's what that is. Uh, thank you for asking. Anime Wow. Um, Space Tacos doesn't have Anime Wow on her bingo card. The Anime Wow is... Uh, do I have it anywhere? Um Yeah, here. I don't know whose card this is, but this is the Anime Wow right here. One that says Anime Wow sound effects. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going, y'all. Somebody give the puppy the baton. That's right. Uh, Space Tacos is in here. Uh, Leatherneck Cyber Warrior says, Jerry, do you have concern around Microsoft Office cloud compromise like lateral movement? Um, so, so Leatherneck, if you get, I mean, this was part of the, uh, the scary thing with that Chinese attack that Microsoft got blown up on, um, in Microsoft Azure, they have these things called tenants. A tenant is like, I have my company's tenant and BSEC has his company's tenant. And even though the tenants are in the same physical architecture, you're not supposed to have tenant to tenant. Um, interaction, right? It's kind of like breaking out of the hypervisor if you're familiar with like VM architecture and stuff like that. So that's not supposed to happen. So lateral movement could only really happen within your organization technically. And a concern, yeah, absolutely. I mean, a infrastructure in the cloud and infrastructure on-prem, they're very similar in the way that endpoints kind of network with each other. So lateral movement can certainly happen. Um, and compromises, I mean, this is why you have to have like zero trust architecture, right? And multi-factor authentication and um, conditional access. Meaning like if BSEC lives in Houston, then BSEC probably shouldn't be logging in from Cambodia or BSEC shouldn't be logging in between the hours of like midnight and 3 a.m., right? And I will tell you, you might say, well, Jerry, what if there's an incident at midnight and BSEC needs to log in? 
there are emergency accounts that have been created or should have been created that will allow you to like break the glass basically and log in and it will document the hell out sorry kennedy it'll document the fact that the emergency account was used but that's why it's there so then because it doesn't happen often where bsec has to log in at midnight so it it reduces that risk that's what conditional access is so yeah microsoft office cloud for sure it, it's a risk right but multi-factor authentication zero trust architecture let's go all right all right what else we got i'm excited for everybody's uh take on who to uh have guest host that week i will uh Maybe we can do some fun stuff. I got to tell you guys, like, this isn't like a flex or anything. Like, that would be the most non-me thing ever. But, like, running the daily cyber threat brief, like, going live and doing all the stories and having hot takes, it's it's not, it's, it's a little intimidating uh, if you haven't done it before. So, it's not like, oh, let's just go live. You know, but I would love to have five different people do it every single day that week. And, you know, give you guys five different flavors of what the daily cyber threat brief could be. I mean, I would love having even guest hosts like Tyler Ramsby, if he wanted to do it, or um, who else, like, who's another kind of streamer? Like, um, who, like, I can't, it's like John Hammond, like, is super busy, right? Jason Haddock's super busy. I know Tyler's busy, but he might be able to work it in. Um, it's got to be someone that I think would be interested, would have the bandwidth, would be able to pull it off. Um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to think about it. James McQuicken has guest hosted. He hasn't run the show by himself, but James McQuicken at 35,000 feet could certainly do it. I don't know, James, let me know if you're interested. I mean, it would be, it'd be intense. Uh, also, uh, update for everybody in the Simply Cyber community, Charles Finfrock will be in Charleston next week. He will be in person with me. The guy, oh my God. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, hey, <laughs> can you imagine James McQuiggan at 35,000 feet doing the daily cyber threat briefing from seat B1? He's like, just like getting after it. I love it. I love it. That's funny, Rex. I like it. Sandra, Sandra might want to do it. I know I saw on social media, Sandra just like flew to maybe a, like internationally. So I don't know if she's in a place to do it right now. David Bomble or Network Chuck. So David Bomble, I've never, ever engaged with. And Network Chuck, I've, um, I'm on a, I'm on a invite only Discord server that network Chuck is on and he and I have messaged back and forth a little bit, but never like DMS or anything like that. So I don't really have those relationships. What did Ross say? Hold on. What did Ross say? The cloud is not that different. If you are running traditional monolithic workloads. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jen Easterly. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> Jenny Easterly. Imagine Jenny Easterly covering a story about CISA. We could even do two people, right? Like Kimberly from the couch and a uh, water expert, Justin Gold, perhaps. You know, we could do that. Thank you, Lazaro. I do like uh, Network Chuck quite a bit. He's, he's uh, got a good personality, great content. So I would have, I'll tell you what. One person who I cannot have do the show by themselves is Charles Finfrock. If Finfrock ran the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing solo, I, I don't know, I don't know what would happen or how what could happen. Is Deb Wiggly in the chat? Deb Wiggly in the house, everybody. Deb Wiggly, I just want to remind you before you bounce out of here, Deb. Congratulations on Rekka Comics. Where are we, Rekka? Congratulations on Rekka Comics getting funded in 46 minutes. You absolute boss. Deb Wiggly, Jason Blanchard, Black Hills, just straight crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Oh, I meant to tell you guys. Um, can I? So I, I did already, I did sponsor this, so I don't know if I can see these things. Look at this. They have the different tiers and rewards. 
I will tell you that I funded the, um, oh, you can, you can actually see it here. I funded this one um, because I wanted the physical copy. So that's really cool. And I'm totally pumped to uh, support them. But what I wanted to show you is their um, different tiers. One of their tiers, this one's awesome. $5,000, okay? Which is, which is a lot of money, okay? Obviously, right? Five grand, but check this out. It comes with everything in the package. And this right here, you will get all your comics in hardcover, signed, sealed, and you get it hand delivered. That's right, John Strand and as many RECA team people as possible will get on a plane and literally bring it to your house. I hope they film it. I think it's so funny. Um, it's awesome. Cer I certainly couldn't foot for the $5,000 one, but I will tell you that I almost did this one right here because I do have a record player and I do have vinyl and it would have been cool, but um, it just, you know, a little bit of belt tightening over here at Simply Cyber. So I had to, I had to constrain myself a little bit. So anyways, that's it. Good job, Deb. I've got, uh, oh, it's 932. It's 932. Let me let you go. I actually want to get the deck ready for, um, I want to get the deck ready for the uh, quarterly all hands meeting. So just remember guys, uh, let me, let me do this really quickly. Uh, Savannah's my guest next week. She's awesome. Oh, I released another video on my channel yesterday. I forgot to tell you guys. Um, this was an interview I did with Clarence Jobs. I'm so terrible at like telling people about what I'm doing. Um, so the, the state of Simply Cyber, this is the meeting that's happening at noon today or the live stream at noon today. I'll drop a link to that. I hope you can come. Uh, basically, it's an opportunity to hold me accountable and also to um, help shape the future of Simply Cyber initiatives. Also, also, um, where's Discord? You can see here, Discord, we got the event. Cybership, mentorship, AMA, 1 p.m. today. Don't sleep on that. Go to simplycyber.io slash discord to get into the discord server. And uh, I think that's it. All right, guys. Great show, great stream, great weekend, great day. Met the dogs. Everybody be good. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you. Hug your kids. Hug your significant other. Hug your dogs if you're a dog person. Be well, everybody. Until next time, stay secure. If you enjoyed that content, keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed